Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about a comic series called ARCP Adventures Section vs. Willet Alpha. The series was a comic written by the members of Rose Engine prior to making Signalis. This cute little comic is a good insight into the early creative processes of the devs prior to their work on the game. So, hey, with no more delay, let's just get right into this. So let's start off by introducing our cast. First up we have Utopia. Utopia is a faulty produced clone who is deemed imperfect for the military service, so instead was deployed to the police force as a constable. Next up we have Nevada Antilios, who is a half vampire who was sent to conquer the city. However, she had no real interest of doing that, so instead she just serves as a member of the ARCP. From there, we have Rosenthal, who is the prototype artificial police officer. Uh, she is a robot who has been deployed to help the team in their missions. And finally, in terms of major characters, we have Lilith Alpha, an elite clone from a failed secret army that worked to overthrow the government. She's traumatized by the war and is haunted by nightmares from her past. And, for Signalis fans, clearly resembles Arion. So the story begins with Lilith Alpha. She pushes into the Mafia's headquarters and quickly eliminates them. However, as she finishes the mob leader, the ARCP rushes into the scene. In this rush, Rosenthal slips and hurts herself before Lilith Alpha surrenders to the authorities. The story continues with our cast trying to explain what happened to their higher-ups, only to give completely differing stories that do not add up to each other. These different stories are a great opportunity to see into the minds of each of these characters, with the art style and their opinions of what occurred greatly differing from person to person. And Telios' style is dark and morbid. Utopia draws it as a cute comic sesh, and Rosenthal depicts it as a plain tactical game-esque situation. We switch from the retelling events to what Lilith is up to. She's seen being freed from the prison by an unknown figure, who seems to blow a hole into the side of the building to break her out. In the next chapter, we see further explanation of Lilith's breakout. We see this unknown guy who calls himself Lilith's neighbor give her the keys to her cell. He claims that someone told him to do it, but notes that there isn't actually anyone there. Lilith weaves, but not before being asked if she'd like to free her sister by the guy. This comment invokes a strange reaction from Lilith, before her sister states that Willie will have to take her meds soon. Lilith tells the guy to meet her behind the building in 30 minutes, as she intends on going to see Richard Assange, the manger of the ARCP. She breaks into his office, punches him in the face, before interrogating him regarding the people she's killed prior. He reveals he worked for New Line and funneled money from Lebig to them. She then reveals that New Line was mass murdering children and Assange knew. Angered by this, she shoves a grenade in his mouth and weeps. Upon waving, she is stopped by ARCP agent N, and a fight breaks out between the two of these. the fight ends with Willith victorious, knocking Agent out and bringing her to the paramedics. Back outside, Utopia sees Willith and takes pursuit with Officer Fluffernutter. Willith tries to take a moment to relax, but the officers try to confront her, only to immediately end up failing. The next chapter resumes with Willith's hallucinations beginning to amp up. Antelios tries to call Tiger Shark, but Willith states that no one can be trusted. Before she can fully explain her hallucin this at all, her hallucinations overwhelm her. Rosenthal realizes that Lilith is out of control and stuns her. The team, realizing that the police are against Lilith as well, decide to take her somewhere else, somewhere that can be trusted. They arrive at an underground clinic to try to get into Lilith's mind. They do this with the help of the black market doctor, who works with an undercover agent, Peregrine, to delve into Lilith's mind to try and find some answers. In this dream state, each character is presented with details from their past. Antelios remembers looking at cute things as a child, but pretending to be reading from an ancient evil tome. Utopia, who's in the stream, is actually a perfect specimen, rather than the detective clone that she was actually born as. Finally, Rosenthal emerges in a strange land of animals. I think this is most likely akin to electric sheep, seeing as they're fluffy and Rosenthal is a cyborg, and it's a pretty famous reference. All the dreamers push past the door, emerging in a depot, where each of them end up taking a role within this dream. This depot emerged into a giant battle between an enemy faction that I'm going to take a guess here is most likely Mjolnir, the rebel faction that Lilith was part of, seeing as it occurs within Lilith's dream, which then fights against the combined forces of C3 and the Underworld. 
battle is really cool and well drawn, but eventually they find another door leading to a strange internal dream of Lilith. Pushing past the weird dream, they enter her subconscious, searching for the memory where she talks to the Major. Instead, they find a young Lilith with a burning twig. The sister then arrives, ordering them to get away from her, but Lilith, in military gear, then confronts the sister. This is where the comic ends, on a cliffhanger before we can really learn any of the truth going on here. One slight positive is there is a little extra thingy that depicts a private tiger shark and Agent N weeding out the corruption. It's a cute little extra panel that I really like. It is tragic that we don't get the end of the story, and considering it's been five years since the last episode, I'm really doubtful we ever will. Most likely production of Signalis brought the side project to an end. But that's it, I guess. This was a short video running down the plot of ARCP, which was a comic prior to Signalis. I think it's really nice, as I said in the beginning, look into the creative processes of the devs as they were going into the Signalis project. I think it's just a nice little time capsule. It's cool, I liked it, and I thought all of you might like it. But this has been Christopher Beast, and I guess I'll see you all, well, next time.